emerging collectives and why I think they are important. First, I consider we all know information and communications technology have evolved at a tremendous speed. We're all aware of that. But what we mostly don't know is that these technologies are sometimes considered as break technologies. They have in them the capacity to break uh, existing supply chains, existing uh, value networks, which are mostly the basis of most of our businesses. Let me give you some examples. We saw the record labels vanish their sales in CDs and DVDs due to the large download of music and films on the internet. We see TV stations becoming obsolete due to the fact that everyone has his own device where he can see content on the internet everywhere, anywhere, at any time. We see open source attacking proprietary software vendors with big ERP systems coming with software which is free. And let us not forget the phenomenon of cloud computing, taking away the IT out of the organization into the cloud, leaving us with the question, do we still need a CIO in our organization? This has, of course, everything to do with the digitalization of society. And second, with the fact that there is more and more broadband access available almost everywhere at the globe. But there is something else which was already researched by Professor Christensen. He said a disruptive, in a disruptive technology can lead to disruptive innovations and will break existing businesses and businesses that do not change their current business models will break and fail to stay in business. And I think we can all see the compelling example of a large enterprise which is now doing the same as what used to happen with the Titanic almost 100 years ago. Bring me to emerging collectives. There is more. Emerging collectives, what, is, what are emerging collectives? Emerging collectives is actually a name which was given by Professor Petrie, which will also give a talk this afternoon. But an emerging collective, he makes an analogy with an ant colony or a termite hill. An ant colony where we can see that the collective movement exists of individual, rather mindless movement of individual ants, bringing together a movement which constitutes something what we call an ant colony. An emerging collective is a system which emerge and where the control lies within the protocol of the system itself. Let me explain it. Well, there are some features on what's happening. First of all, like with an ant colony, there is a capacity to scale the network. The colony can grow as big and as large as it can. Second, there must be value for the user into the collective. Another, which we also already have mentioned, is the broadband access. The ITU predicts that by 2015, low-level broadband access will be available at less than 5% of the average monthly income all over the world. This is now already the case in Europe. With some countries like France, 0.3% of the monthly average income is <coughs> spent on broadband access. Another feature, we, will, we need to access the network at any time and at any place, anywhere. And something which is the last for the last um, years becoming very um, typically is the consumeration and even the customization of IT 
also known as bring your own device. You go to the company, you go to the organization, and you have your own device. You have an iPhone, you have an iPad, and you bring it to the organization and do your stuff within the organization. By the same time, we see the boundaries of the organization vanish. The difference between home and the company seems to vanish. A very important feature of an emerging collective is the user is in control of the content. The most compelling example, of course, is there YouTube. It's also an example of Flickr. But it is the user that defines the content. This brings us to another feature of an emerging collective. There is no single controlling entity that controls the collective. Bring us to the question, to what leads an emerging collective? Does it lead to chaos? Well, the answer is no. Chaos is merely a side effect. Of course, we all saw last year the Arab Spring, which was due mainly due to social media. So it has the power to change politics and organizations. But let's say that the chaos is not really the target of an emerging collective. Where is the control? Who controls the emerging? Well, the control lays, as I was saying, in the protocol of the individual movements itself. So there is no single controlling entity. And that's a very, perhaps the most important feature of an emerging collective. Of course, most businesses immediately, since they are brought up in older systems, want to be in control of such a system. The question is, who's in control? We see all kinds of people who want to be in control of a collective, want to make money out of it, but nobody is really in control. Even Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook, is not anymore in control of the content that is exchanged in his network. Of course, he is still the owner of Facebook, and I think my colleague Gilles Coudron will talk about the dangers of being in control, a whole network being in control by a geek, but still, he's not in control of the content. Although existing companies, they have a tendency to build a wall around their market. They call it the walled garden. They have a garden where you can play, where you can nicely play, but they built a wall around them. So they can decide who can play in the garden and at what price you can play in my garden. A walled garden. A nice example are the telecom operators. Telecom operators who like to be in control of, for instance, 3G, 4G networks and see the emerge of Wi-Fi, which is actually an emerging collective free, where we decide what content we will exchange on Wi-Fi, they want to build a wall around it. But the walled gardens are under attack. More and more we see the walls coming under attack. Then the question arises, what business model is now appropriate to harvest the richness of an emerging collective? What most companies do is Extra, uh, is adding extra layers of complexity into their organization. They tend to grow bigger and bigger. This is a tendency in the old economy. If you want to make money, you have to grow, you have to verticalize, you have to take control over your suppliers, you have to take control over your customers. It was all told to us by Michael Porter with his model, but those models seem to fail today to explain, not only to explain, but at least to harvest the richness of an emerging collective. So putting extra layers of complexity into uh, your organization brings the marginal cost almost higher and higher. The marginal returns become negative, and at that point, an organization collapses. 
let me give you an example of piracy. How, how to fight piracy? I'm not, I'm not, I won't uh, discuss the, um, the good or bad of piracy, but it is an emerging collective part of our digital ecosystem. And there actually are three possibilities to fight piracy. First, sue them till they die. What company kills his customers? I don't think it's a good solution. Second is blocking access. I don't know if you have followed the recent uh, uh, discussions going on in the States about the uh, SOPA and the PIPA Act. I don't understand why they did it, because they had a, uh, an experience already in France, Hadoki, which failed also. So this is the second possibility. But the third one is actually the most creative one. This is creating an alternative business model. And let me give you some examples. Netflix in the States is offering payable content that you, that you normally can see on the television. Now you can get the payable content on your device on the internet. They have seen that Netflix, which is not uh, available in, in um, not all, uh, everywhere available in Europe, but they have seen that the, the amount of broadband which is used by Netflix is around 28%, which is almost equal as the amount of broadband usage in Europe by BitTorrent. So you can see that you can replace piracy by legal business model. Same goes for iTunes. Of course, you have to change quite fundamentally, fundamentally your business plan because by iTunes, every song has the same price. But still, every people pay for a, for a song. And we see other examples, by example, BBC iPlayer coming up and try to see what really um, could be taken out of an emerging collective. So why are the emerging collectives now important? Well, they are important because we cannot stop the commodization and the digitalization of society. We cannot stop it. It will, go in, it will go on and go on and go on. We cannot stop it. Second, the classical roles seems to vanish. We have double roles now. If we take part in an economic system, we are supplier and at the same time we are customer. If I go on YouTube, I can consume movies, but I can also deliver movies. So there is no real difference between a supplier and a customer. We are, we are, in fact, all independent, independent entrepreneurs and entre independent businesses delivering our own little keys on the collective. There is a mixture of leisure and work. The boundaries are not so strict anymore. The privacy don't stop at the boundaries of an organization. That's why it's so difficult to, to explain what's now a privacy issue and what's now an organizational issue. A person does not stop to be a person once he gets into an organization. So the boundaries of an organization seems to vanish. And the competitive advantages that used to be, that worked in older models seems to vanish also. So we have to think on new business models and we have to think how we can harvest these evolving emergencies. What will the future bring? I don't know, but what we see is that some companies struggle with these phenomena. Let me give you the example of social media. Some of, our, some of the organizations say, we banish social media out of our organization. Other companies say, well, let's organize, let's, uh, let's work with some organizational slack. 
let's bring some tinker time into the organization, which was already mentioned also by Clay, uh, Clay Shirky. For instance, the, 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 the nice example is the, the 80-20 formula by Google, where they say, okay, 80% of your time you devote to core projects within Google, but 20% of your time work on your passion, work on innovations, and you will see what happens. If, if there is nothing happening, well, it's fine also. So this is actually some of the examples where we have to experience and where we have to be careful with those emerging collectives. And I think that the future will be for real entrepreneurs, smart entrepreneurs, who dare to formulate a sound business plan and who dare to, uh, to go on the market and try to write the real fruits of an emerging collective. Thank you for your attention.